You're most welcome to this talk. Now, this is not medical advice. Never start anything or stop anything or take any medications or vaccines or not take them based on what we say on this channel. This is for educational purposes only, but it is pretty mind-blowing stuff. We're going to be looking at this paper here. Impact of childhood vaccinations on short and long term health outcomes in children, a birth cohort study. The full PDF is freely available. Now, um, I would now tell you where this paper is published, uh, but this paper is not published. But it was submitted to the Senate hearing as uh, evidence. This is the hearing here. Uh, and you can listen to the whole thing uh, at, at your leisure. It's all uh, it's all on that link there that I've posted. Now, um, let's get straight on to the results and see if you want to listen to this video. This is the study here. Uh, how, how this is the title of the hearings, how the corruption of science has impacted public perceptions and policy regarding policies regarding vaccines. Now, there's no question in my mind that there's corruption in science, so I would agree with the, the heading here. Uh, after multivariate analysis, now this is not COVID vaccines, this is just any childhood vaccination. After multivariate adjustment, 57% of vaccinated children developed at least one chronic health condition. So the kids that were vaccinated, 57%, at least one chronic health condition. In the unvaccinated group, it was 17% developed a chronic health condition. So we see, according to this paper, way more chronic health conditions developing in vaccinated versus unvaccinated children. That's why I was so careful to say don't do or not do anything based on this video. It's purely for academic purposes. But the results are really quite staggering. Let me give you some more. Uh, exposure to vaccine was independently associated with an increased risk of developing a chronic health condition. The hazard ratio 2.53. In other words, basically two and a half times more likely. And the researchers were 95% certain that the actual result was between 2.16 and 2.96. So they said 2.53, which seems, well, it is in the middle, isn't it? So there you go. Um, this is chronic health conditions. Now, of course, this is telling us nothing about how these vaccines protect against the particular infection that they are giving the vaccine against. It tells us nothing about that. It's purely telling us that this vaccinated co cohort, according to this unpublished study, but submitted to the Senate, um, that they, they get more long term conditions. Um, strange this has not been published yet. I believe, I believe this came out in 2020. The results came out in 2020. I only heard about it yesterday when I was actually talking to Jimmy Dore about this. I actually hadn't, he hadn't heard about it. Unless you're following the US Senate hearings quite closely, you would you would probably miss this. Now, um, exposure to vaccination. Um, overall, the development of a chronic health condition occurred more often in the group exposed to, uh, exposed to vaccines versus unexposed to vaccines. And the probability of this result arising by chance is one in 10,000. So um, very unlikely that this arose by chance. Um, and so, so there we are. Uh, this is this is the risk ratio two put two point four eight more likely in the exposed group. That's the vaccinated group, than in the uh, unvaccinated group. Um, more to come, I'm afraid. This is the uh, looking at independent, uh, independently association with an increased risk of. In other words, after the vaccine, compared to the unvaccinated group. Uh, there were uh, 4.25, four and a quarter times more likely to get be diagnosed with asthma in the 10-year follow-up. Again, confidence limits, 95% sure, was between 3.25 and 5.95. So over four times more likely to be diagnosed with asthma if the if in the vaccination group. Autoimmune disease, uh, nearly five times more likely to be diagnosed. A uh, pretty wide distribution there of uh, confidence. Uh, atopic disease, that's basically likely to get allergies to various things. 
uh, three times more likely to get it. Hazard ratio three. Eczema uh, one point three. I mean, if you like, you could call that like three hundred and three percent more likely, or you could call that four hundred and seventy nine percent more likely. It's just different ways of expressing the same thing. Neurodevelopmental disorder in the vaccinated group, uh, five point five three times more likely to to get it. That included mental health, neurodevelopmental disorders, including developmental delay and speech disorders. Ear infections, over six, six and a half, more than six and a half times more likely to get ear infections. Chronic ear infections, over five and a half times more likely to get those. Anaphylactic reactions, nearly nine times more likely to get those. Uh, Asthma attacks and bronchospasm, 6.3 times more likely. That's that's the risk ratio, but it's, it's basically the same. Slightly different calculation. Uh, And there were no chronic health conditions associated with uh, an increased risk in the unexposed group. So in all cases, what this is saying, in all cases, the exposed group, that is the vaccinated group, were more likely to be diagnosed with these long-term health conditions during a a 10-year follow-up. This exposes a huge limitations, of course, in most studies that are done on this where the follow-up is 30 days which of course is laughable you're not going to develop very unlikely to develop a chronic health condition in 30 days but in 10 years of course as we've seen chances are much much higher Um, statistical comparison could not be conducted for certain conditions such as diabetes and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder because there were no cases in the unexposed group so the unexposed group didn't get any cases of diabetes or ADHD. Um, So they didn't feel they could do a comparison. 10-year follow-up, the overall probability of being free from a chronic uh, health condition at 10 years follow-up. So 43% in the group exposed to a vaccine, 83% in the uh, unexposed group. Just show you a graphic of this, actually, that might make a bit more sense. So... um, Basically, here we have the uh, the group that weren't vaccinated. So this is, this is um, ten year chronic disease free survival. So these are patients that are f- free of chronic diseases. So we see in the non vaccinated group a much higher percentage were free of chronic diseases, whereas in the vaccinated group a much higher proportion got a chronic disease. And we can see that the difference gets greater with time. Makes you wonder what it would be like in a 15-year follow-up. But that's the 10-year follow-up as the the difference between the two groups gets greater with time. Again, meaning the 30-day follow-up that these vaccine trials normally give is is ridiculous, totally uh, ridiculous. So the probability of being free of a chronic disease, 43% in the exposed group, uh, 83% in the unexposed group. And of course, you want to be of have, have a high a probability as, as possible of not developing a chronic disease. And again, chance one in 10,000 that that arose by chance. Uh, so basically that result is phenomenally unlikely to arise by chance. A few more links there to YouTube videos about this. Now, where did this paper come from? Well, uh, this is the site here, Committee on Homeland Security and Government Affairs. Now, it's a PDF so it hasn't actually got a, uh, a link, but um, if you if you just search uh, Henry Ford vaccine study, you'll get it. And you can download, like me, you can download the PDF because it was entered into the records uh, of the uh, hearings. So get the full PDF for yourself. Uh, and it's, it's, it's actually a very intelligible paper, I must say. Um, very intelligible. Um, I'll just show you it again. It's uh, here. Um, pretty easy to read. Pretty straightforward. There's the abstract. Um, with the, some of the basic figures in it. And it goes on to explain a lot of the detail. Over the past 30 years, the prevalence of chronic health conditions in children has increased. According to a 2011 study, approximately 43% of children in the United States, 32 million have at least one of the 20 chronic health conditions assessed in the study. Despite this, there is a paucity of published data to determine contributing factors. It's basically a, it's like, it's like a, 
epidemic, isn't it, of chronic disease in kids? Where, where is the curiosity about this? So overall, increased risk in the vaccinated group um, and for those specific conditions, uh, clear increase in risk according to this data. So this is the study. Objective of the study to compare the short and long-term health outcomes with a captured payer environment. Basically, it was everyone in the Michigan uh, Henry Ford uh, insurance scheme. Um, but that's good because it means they can follow them up of children exposed to one or more vaccines compared to those unexposed. So integrated healthcare systems in Michigan, the Henry Ford system, which I believe is the biggest or the second biggest provider in Michigan. Uh, 18,000 18,468 children were recruited, born between the year 2000 and the year 2016. Um, yeah, they're in, all enrolled in the health insurance plan, Henry Ford plan in Michigan. Main outcomes, development of a chronic health condition over time, as we've seen much higher in the vaccinated group, sadly. Um, the results, um, so they had 18,468 consecutive subjects. Uh, 1,957 had no exposure to vaccines, uh, but the group that were exposed to vaccines, of course, was much higher, 16,115. But of course, the statistics take this fully into account, and that is a big enough number to get these good statistics, as we've seen. Uh, very low p-values, meaning the results were incredibly unlikely to have arisen by chance. So it's a fairly big number study, this um, yeah, quite, quite, quite large numbers. In exposed subjects, the medium number of vaccines was 18. And, and of course, this is 2020. Um, I believe the schedules in the States now are giving even more vaccines than that, um, which some people are concerned about. Um, and remember, this is, this is not COVID vaccines. This is just childhood vaccinations. So um, interquartile range, the middle 50% are between 2 and 28 vaccines. Heck, so that means the upper quartile had more than 28. Um, but anyway, the, the, the uh, median number was 18. Conclusion, this study found that exposure to vaccination was independently associated with an overall 2.5-fold increased risk in the likelihood of developing a chronic health condition. When exposed, when compared to children uh, unexposed to vaccination, the authors say this suggests that in certain children, exposure to vaccination may increase the likelihood of developing a chronic health condition, particularly for one of the conditions mentioned. Now, as I said, this study is not published. Um, there seems to be a, a reluctance to publish it for some reason. I have no idea why that might be. You might have some ideas on that. Let me know what you think. Um, but it's now in the public domain as a submission to Senate, which is why I feel free to talk about it. And the, and the, the video, there's hours and hours of video on it as well. So obviously, uh, this study has been, what's the expression? Fact checked. <laughs> and uh, the fact checkers don't like it. So is this study flawed? Um, lots of things are poo-pooing this study, saying it's the, uh, it's a load of rubbish. Um, so this likely demonstrates that when a child has a medical condition, parents sought health care. So the main counter argument seems to be that in the children that were vaccinated, they went to health care providers more often for longer, therefore were more likely to be diagnosed of a condition. But believe me, if your child's got diabetes, you're going to seek health care advice. If your child's got asthma, you're going to seek health care advice because if you don't, they're going to die. And parents, of course, are going to take them to, to healthcare providers. So that, that's quite a good argument against the idea that uh, the vaccinated ones were, uh, their diseases were detected more because these are diseases that require medical diagnosis and medical treatment. Otherwise, the children very often would simply die. They, they, they would not be with us anymore. Uh, in fact, many conditions evaluated in this study are serious and cannot be self-treated. Yeah, that's what, this, this is directly from the authors such as asthma, diabetes, anaphylaxis or asthma attacks 
I mean, heck, you know, you, you can die from asthma attacks, no problem at all. It, it's a life-threatening emergency, or can be. Warning, war, warranting urgent medical care. We nonetheless conducted several sensitivity analyses to explore the influence of healthcare utilisation, in other words, how likely you were to go to healthcare, in order to improve the internal validity of this study and minimise the potential of ascertainment bias. So was it that in the vaccinated group that they were ascertained as having more medical conditions? According to the researchers, not Cox Proximity Hazard Analysis, which is a statistical tool that they used in this, the association between vaccine and uh, development of a chronic health condition was independent of these factors. Therefore, our findings do not appear to be due to uh, differential use of healthcare resources. So that, if true, would undermine uh, the fact-checking arguments, fact-checking arguments that, that I've read. Um, this pub study needs to be published and opened up to global peer review and needs to be repeated in other cases. The authors do say, as far as they're aware, this is the only study where there's been complete um, a, a, an evaluation between those vaccinated and those not vaccinated at all. That would seem obvious to me, and I suspect, suspect obvious to you, but apparently it wasn't done until this study came along. As I say, this tells you nothing about how they're protected from specific diseases. So what we have here is a risk-benefit analysis being protected from some specific diseases versus developing a chronic condition. And of course, if you develop asthma or diabetes or autoimmune disease, you could have that for life. So this needs to be done fairly urgently. Uh, as I say, do not take any vaccines based on what I say. Do not not take any vaccines based on what I say. This is purely for academic edu edu educational purposes. But it is rather interesting, isn't it? Let's get it published. Let's get it peer reviewed. Let's get replication studies done. And then we'll know more than we know now. Prima facie uh, interpretation of this study is a great concern and questions really quite fundamentally. Um, a lot of things that are accepted as healthcare axioms. But maybe it's good to ask the fundamental questions. Yeah, let's free to ask questions, but uh, let's be very slow to, to act on them until we know exactly what we're talking about. So there you go, purely academic video. Bless you and thank you for watching.